With the upcoming AOS campaign book series Dawnbringers coming to a close with book 4, it looks like there is a lot for the Death Factions to look forward to, and fresh off the back of the recently released Flesh Eater Courts, led by their Mortark Usharan, we are getting yet another stunning new death model to literally sink our teeth into. This on your screen now is Sakaar. She is the Fang of New Lamia. She is a member of Neferata's court and she is all about scheming, deceit and spreading that insidious, corrupting influence of her Mortark. And I just love it. I think Sakaar is a brilliant model. I love the whole design. I love her Kopesh style spear melee weapon, which harkens back to that old Egyptian Tomb Kings style aesthetic. Her armor is, I mean, it's honestly quite plain, but also really, really stylish at the same time. It's, it's very weird to look at because it doesn't look super, super fancy, but also it's really shiny and cool. It's just got this really unique look to it that looks very functional and not super ornate, but you just can't help think, wow, that's really fancy kind of over the top armor, even though it doesn't look it. It's just really interesting. And I don't know if it's just the paint job, but they've done a really good job of making the armor and the whole design sort of be something that you look at and you think that's a bit plain, but it just looks slightly weird. And I think that's the whole kind of point about the, the vampires is that they look human. They're kind of like Eldari in that they look human. And like for someone that doesn't really know the law in the background, you'd think, oh, it's just like a big human, but they're meant to look off. They're meant to look weird. There's meant to be this sort of like uncanny valley look to them. And this model, this aesthetic really plays into that incredibly well, I think. And then of course, she also has that cool giant hat design that a lot of death factions seem to copy from Big Papa Nagash himself. And then the thing that is really just the icing on the cake for me is that big snake, which is on the base. It's just cool and menacing. And in my opinion, it's the the perfect way to kind of base this model and give it that extra bit of lore and backstory and character to it. In terms of the snake, the snake is apparently Orberoth, which is her familiar. It is sort of like the remnants of a god. The god was the Time Swallower, and Sakaar, basically in the lore, managed to infiltrate the priesthood of this god and slowly but surely over time undermine its influence until Nagash could come and basically claim its power for himself. So it's just a really nice bit of extra lore and background that being on the base adds to the model and just makes this kit. I'm not going to say it's a centerpiece kit because it's not really big enough, but it is a very striking kit that you can have in your army that really will draw people's attention and be something really cool to paint up and look at. In terms of her rules, the snake obviously does play a big part as well. It gives Sakaar her special rule of serpentine agility, which I have to say is really, really strong. What it does is it makes it so she can only be hit on an unmodified hit roll of five or six. And this isn't just in melee, it's against all attacks. So even against those scary long ranged archers that are hitting you on threes, they are now only hitting you on fives or sixes. And all those units charging into you may be getting plus one to hit with all out attack. Not anymore, you're only hitting on fives. So this can make a really big, big difference. You could have a unit that was previously hitting you on twos, now only hitting you on fives. It is genuinely a very powerful rule and cutting out immediately just 66% of the incoming damage that she can expect to take is very, 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 very strong. I think based on what we can see in the model, she's probably only going to end up having something like a four up armor save. So she could be relatively flimsy if the hit and the damage does get through. But I just think straight away, cutting out anything except fives and sixes to hit her is going to be a hugely strong boost to her durability. And I do think that even if she does only have a four up armor save, she is still going to be really quite tanky and really difficult for your opponent to get rid of. She can also give up this ability if she uses one of her other powers that she gets, which is the Time Swallower's Maw. 
This lets you once per game roll 2d6 at the start of the combat phase and every enemy unit within 6 inches, if that 2d6 roll is higher than their movement, they take mortal wounds equal to the difference. So something like Nurgle units with a 4 inch move, they will on average take around 3 mortal wounds from this because the average on 2d6 is a roll of a 7. So it can be a fairly strong way to spam out a load of mortal wounds onto a few enemy squads around you as they kind of all pile in for the kill. It's not a bad ability, although I would personally say I would rather keep Serpentine Agility for as long as possible just because it is such a good durability boost. I think my plan for her will be to move her up and obviously we don't know all of her rules yet but just in terms of what we've seen here, move her up get her kind of tanking some enemies and killing enemies in melee and then maybe in the last turn of the game blast out the more just to kill off a few models before the, the game ends and you don't really need to worry about that that five and six to be hit rule anymore because the, the game is essentially over so you can just use the serpentine agility to keep her alive all game long and then blast out the more in the last turn or two just to kill a few more of the models that may be kind of fighting towards the end of the game. The article also tells us that Sakaar is coming in a new box, which is made up of her alongside three units of Felbats and 10 Direwolves, which isn't the most exciting box, I'll admit, but both Felbats and Direwolves are quite useful units in a Soulblight army, and I think Felbats especially are notoriously expensive to buy separately so this could be a really nice way to get them into your list and into your army if you want some and get a few extra bits on top in terms of Sakaar and the Direwolves all whilst getting them at a bit of a discount. And then the article also says that the rules for Sakaar will be going up on Warcom for free which is another nice bonus but that isn't all because they also announced that not only is Sakaar coming with a brand new army of renown but in book four of the Dawnbringer series, there will be six armies of renown coming, one for each of the Mortarks. So Neferata, Usharan, Lady Alinda, Catacross, Manfred, and Arkan will all be getting an army of renown to go along with them, and some form of new rules and abilities to play around with in this book, which is unbelievably exciting, especially for someone like myself, who collects all four of the death armies. So all round, I am super, super hyped to see these new armies of renown and these new rules. I am even more hyped to get my hands on this new model because I think she looks incredible. Her lore, her backstory all sound really, really fun. And I am just hoping that she is at least vaguely competitive so that it feels good to bring her in games alongside the Mortark Neferata. But as always, I'd really love to know what your thoughts on this. What do you think of Sikar? What do you think of her model? And what do you think of the two rules that we have seen so far? And I'd also really like to know what you think we might see in these six upcoming armies of renown. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe for more Warhammer content from me. But until next time, I'll catch you later, guys.